Welcome to the History of Marvel. Today's episode is Rocket Raccoon, Earth 616. Centuries ago, a group of alien humanoids settled the largest planet in the Keystone Quadrant star system. They built a complex to house and treat the insane, recording their medical observations in a psychiatric diary. When the strength's funding was cut, they abandoned the project, but not before they created a staff of robot stewards to provide for the humanoids. They then separated the quadrant from the rest of the galaxy with an impenetrable force field. When a nearby star went supernova, ensuing radiation gave sentience to the robots, which quickly chafed at the illogical directives of the humanoids, or loonies. Seeking to end their servitude, the robots used genetic engineering to give intelligence and awareness to the animals that had been left as companion for the patients. They charged the animals with the patient's care and protection, then relocated to the far side of the planet, which they proceeded to strip bare through industrial endeavors, one of which was construction of a vast humanoid spacecraft called SHIP. The half-industrial, half-bearded planet became known as the Half-World. The animals continued to care for the humans, and the robots provided a lot of equipment, weapons, and parts for toys. The psychiatric diary left by the physicians, now known in legend as the Shrinks, became an indecipherable icon called Gideon's Bible. Toys played an important part in half-world society as entertainment for the loonies. Without toys, the loonies lapsed into a deep melancholy, so the animals made certain nothing interrupted production. Two otters formed the first toy factory, and upon their death, it was taken over by the mole Judson Jakes, who established his headquarters in the Space Wheel space station built by the tortoise Uncle Pico. Pico designed toys, weapons, an army of robot clowns, and the bat like Drake killers. Jakes' first attempt to steal Gideon's Bible, decipher its secrets, and turn them to profit was stopped by the Hulk. He had been transported to Half-World by the energies released by the Galaxy Master and was met by Rocket Raccoon and Walrus. The Hulk decided that he liked these two critters and helped defend them against a powerful tank called a Robo Mower. The three of them fled into Rocket's spaceship, the Rackin' Ruin, and blasted off. Rocket Raccoon explained to the Hulk that Half-World is threatened by an insidious mole named Judson Jakes. Jakes sought to acquire this fabled Gideon's Bible which he believed will enable him to conquer not only Half-World, but the entire Keystone Quadrant. The Hulk agreed to help Rocket and Walrus safeguard Gideon's Bible from Jackson Jake's clutches. Rocket Raccoon fled to the Cuckoo's Nest, where he discovered that Judson Jake's had not only stolen Gideon's Bible, but he had also kidnapped Rocket's girlfriend, Lila, as well. The three boarded the ship once again and headed towards Judson's satellite headquarters, the Space Wheel. While Rocket Raccoon desperately searched for Lila, the Hulk had an encounter with Judson's chief scientist, Uncle Pico. Pico knows that the Hulk's prodigious strength would give the opponent a great advantage, so he convinces the Hulk to return home to Earth. He provides the Hulk with the means to teleport his body back to his homeworld. Rocket Raccoon, meanwhile, got the drop on Judson Jakes. Although he failed to recover Gideon's Bible, he did succeed in rescuing Layla. Later, Rocket Raccoon was held prisoner by the Kree on the planet Aladon Prime. Rocket claimed he was framed for the charges put against him. On Aladon Prime, he was introduced to Peter Quill, the former Star-Lord, as one of the members of a strike commando team that Peter would lead against the Phalax, who had taken over the Kree Empire. The rest of the team included Bug, Deathcry, Mantis, Captain Universe, and Groot. Rocket was presented as the master technician and the heavy weapons expert of the group. Rocket instantly formed a bond with Groot. They were sent to Hala to destroy a biotech reproduction facility. They'd be attacked once in a while, but Rocket would prove to be a loyal and useful combatant and companion. They were also soon attacked by the Phalax. During the battle, Captain Universe killed Deathcry in an act of self-defense, and Groot was killed as they were escaping. This saddened Rocket, as he considered Groot to be his buddy at this point. A couple days later, while waiting for Quill to get back from a reconnaissance mission, Groot caught up with the team again, but now he was only as big as a twig. Just then, Quill arrived with news that the Phalax had already released the virus as an airborne nanovirus, meaning that everyone on the planet are slowly becoming infected. Suddenly, the phalanx come out of nowhere and attack the team, and they are forced to flee. They fled out into the open streets of Hala. There, Rocket, Quill, Bug, and Tiny Groot were captured, while Mantis and Captain Universe evaded capture. Later in prison, Rocket was debating with the team what the phalanx were going to do to them. 
Rocket was betting on dissection. Mantis and Captain Universe eventually were able to bust them out of their prison cells and gain more information on the virus. They made their escape, but were engaged by Kree soldiers. The Kree soldiers immediately disobeyed the Phalax's orders of preventing their escape when they found out they were firing at the legendary Star-Lord. They gave the team their ship and Rocket piloted out of Hallow to another Kree world, Alon Jin. After a few days of rest, Rocket, a normal sized Groot, a powerless Captain Universe, and the others came to Quill ready for the next mission. A few days later, Rocket and the crew were back on Hala taking part of an anti-Phalax resistance that Quill was secretly leading. Rocket's plan to get Blastar captured, tortured, and killed by the Phalax so that he could release spores inside the Babel Spire, the heart of the Phalax's power, worked. Not long after, they entered the spire and started planting bombs around the place. Mantis then telepathically communicated to Rocket, telling him that Quill had been captured and Captain Universe had been killed. He immediately came up with a plan with Groot that involved Mantis using her abilities to speed up Groot's growing abilities so that he could wrap himself around the spire. Once Groot had wrapped himself around the spire, Rocket, Mantis, and Bug went to rescue Quill. They found the nearest balcony and jumped off it as Groot detonated himself, causing the entire spiral to crumble. Back on the streets of Hala, they were attacked by the Phalex's leader, Ultron, in the body of cosmic hero Adam Warlock. Ultron attacked and subdued Mantis, but before he could attack the rest of the team, Nova Prime, Gamora, and Drax the Destroyer came swooping in to save them. Quill's team's mission was now to get themselves out of the fight. Quill brought an unconscious Mantis while Rocket kept a tiny piece of Groot to plant later. They saw that the Phalax were building another giant structure, which would turn out to be a giant version of Ultron. Before they had time to react, more cosmic powers arrived to defeat Ultron. Quasar and Adam Warlock finally managed to defeat Ultron, and the Kree Empire was saved. Rocket saw to the regrowth of Groot after the battle. The Guardians followed the returned Thanos to Earth, where he and his own Zodiac fought the Avengers. When the Avengers returned to the Stark Tower after a battle, the Guardians of the Galaxy suddenly arrived offering help. The Guardians divulged that Earth was off-limits to all extraterrestrials, explaining Thanos has used Earth-bound agents in amassing items of power such as a man-crafted cosmic cube. The Guardians and the Avengers embarked on a journey through space to find Thanos. The heroes were attacked by the Badoon, who were working for Thanos. After escaping a near-death experience, the heroes managed to defeat the enemies and found themselves against an intense light revealed to be a massive cosmic cube floating in space at the heart of an astral ghost of Thanos. Thor tried to defeat Thanos, but is apparently killed along with his team and the Guardians. In reality, they were sent to the Cancerverse, where they found the Elders of the Universe supposedly killed by Thanos to impose his supremacy. There, Tony Stark found that Thanos' weapon wasn't actually a cosmic cube and that it had defects. They bargained with the Collector in exchange for a weapon capable of deactivating the cube and return to Earth. The Avengers and the Guardians would let Thanos be defeated by the Elders. With the help of the other members of the Avengers, Thanos was defeated and sent to punishment by the Elders. Due to his enormous help with the defeat of Thanos, Star-Lord personally offered Iron Man a spot on his team, which he gladly accepted. Raccoon Psychology Rocket possesses the same enhanced abilities attributed to Earth raccoons, including an acute sense of smell and sharp eyesight. A raccoon's brown coat mostly consists of dense underfur which insulates against cold weather. Being a raccoon, many of Rocket's senses are heightened to levels well above human. He's able to see much better than the average human and is extremely well adapted to near dark conditions. His enhanced sense of smell allows him to detect subtle changes in sense around him, enabling him to detect the approach of others and increasing his ability to operate in darkness. With his broad auditory range, he can perceive tones outside the range of the human ear as well as subtle sounds caused by vibrations on the ground. His hypersensitive paws allow him to identify objects before touching them, with fibrous location above his claws. Rocket is much stronger than a normal Earth raccoon. He is able to physically overpower people many times his size and carry a weight of artillery weapons that only the average sized humanoid can normally use. Rocket can survive damage that would normally be sufficient to kill an animal of his size and injure a normal sized human. He withstood getting thrown by Starhawk and being shot with energy blasts fired by powerful beings such as the Ultron possessed Adam Warlock. Thank you for watching and special thanks to the Marvel Database for all information you have heard today. 
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can, if you have. Thank you and have a great day.